But the reality is he's, he's writing to a completely different culture, all of it, you know? And, yes. And so it begins to say, okay, maybe maybe my lens and the way I view this. 100%, yeah. 100%. I, I come from a an educational background that is a little bit different than the Nazarene tradition. Yeah. Um, and that, that form is a lens, whether we like it or not. I don't think there's a human in history that is able to approach scripture yeah. without projecting their own worldview yeah. onto it. All righty, here we are back so soon. Back so soon. It's another episode. We're wearing the exact same thing. <laughs> We're just knocking them out today, man. You can, tell, you can tell who the lead pastor is and who the person is who oversees the youth around here. <laughs> and who didn't get the memo that this was going to be recorded on video. Yeah, memo might not have been sent, but <laughs> like, just show up, man. Come on. I need to, I, I feel better about myself when I... I do this when I dress up. When you dress, bit. when you, yeah. And yeah. you look good. You look good. I, uh, uh, on the other hand, um, but, the, but guess what? You don't need to compensate for anything. You got the, <laughs> you got the resources, bro. I, like, come on, man. <laughs> they are all here. You're not, I got my notebook. I got my Bible. Anything. I got my notes. <laughs> you got notes on notes. This is the most prepared we've ever been for a podcast. It sure is. <laughs> Cause most of them, uh, our approach is more like the last podcast. Uh, yes. Well, and that's not that's not no, bad. No, it's an overflow. It's an overflow of what we've been wrestling through. This was certainly a, a overflow, but uh, much more thought through, prepared, yes. Yes. Uh, humble. We want to make sure approach. that what we're saying is in fact coming from a, a place of articulation. Yeah that we're being very gracious with what we're talking about, um, that we're not just uh, shooting from the hip, but we want to be very intentional with yeah. the topics that we discuss from here on out. Yeah, yeah, and there might, there will be probably mm -hmm. disagreements about yeah. how do we 100%. navigate those disagreements. Yes. And, and so today we want to talk about how we approach scripture. Yeah. Because there's a lot of different approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, some are helpful, some are not so yep. helpful. Yep. And so what is our, our humble approach to the Word of God? Yeah. Um, because it's not so clear sometimes. It's, it, it, it isn't. Uh, I, Brittany Dooley, um, when she came here to staff, she showed us all this quotes regarding, and Scripture is deep enough for an elephant to bathe in but shallow enough for a child to play in. It, really what it's saying is scripture is incredibly deep. We will never ever as humans here on earth yeah. meet the depths of what scripture has for us. And yet it's very simple. But we don't want to rely on the simplicity and sacrifice the depths to it. And we yeah. also don't want to just go so deep that we miss the simplicity of it. So we have to live in this beautiful tension of the back and forth. We don't want to overcomplicate things. But there is a reason that men and women have dedicated their entire lives to the yeah. studying of Scripture. Yeah. Professors and seminary degrees are out there. Do you need a seminary degree to study Scripture? By no means. But at the same time, we rely on those who have gone before us, who have studied it so in depth yeah. to where we say, okay, we've, we've gathered our thoughts from these men who have mm -hmm. gone deeper than us. Yeah, it would be foolish yes. not to, not to uh, approach Scripture with, with some um, uh, encouragement, with, with the, the thoughts and, and uh, humble mm -hmm. um, conclusions yeah. of yeah. scholars who, who uh, differ yeah, in a variety of ways, who are well respected. Yes, uh, ac across the the entire Capital C Church. That's exactly right. For all time, the last two thousand some years, yeah. men and women have gone forth. And I, I'll tell you this: there are a lot of men and women who are far smarter than either one of us. That you and I, we would disagree with them. Yeah, and we're not saying that we're smarter than them, but we've also relied uh, on others who have gone before us to help form our thoughts, to help yeah. form our approach to Scripture. Yeah. Um, and so we have to be humble about this because there are people who are going to disagree, um, who are smarter than us, who have studied scripture longer than we've been alive. Yeah. And we recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also I, I don't want to, I don't feel the need to defend. Sure. Or carry water or this, the word of God. Right. right. Is beautiful. It is. And it, it is. is solid. It is. And it is majestic. And it is, it, it, it really what it does is it, the more things I don't understand, truly, mm -hmm. it leads me to worship, and it should. This awe and wonder. Yeah. I mean, when you can read a when you can read a book a thousand different times and learn something new. Yeah. I mean, we're told in, in the book of Hebrews, it is a living document, yeah. and it pierces. Yeah. Um, and and how amazing is it 
that an infinite, eternal God yeah. would use finite, flawed, sinful yeah. men to write a document to reveal yeah. himself yeah. to us. Yeah. And now he's continuing to use men and women to discern what's being written here mm-hmm. to reveal or to show and to talk about his attributes and how he, much he loves us and pursues us yeah. and wants to be in relationship with us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and all things, they, they point towards Christ, they point towards our God. They That's point exactly toward right. The, the word was made flesh and dwelled among us, yes. you know, and yes. now this word points to Christ. This and we want to know Christ fully. Mm-hmm. But that requires wrestling. That requires us to go beyond the simplicity and explore the depths a little bit yeah. to understand what are we teaching, what are we relying yeah. upon, and how do we best move forward the kingdom of God yeah. today as as we believe Scripture would have for yeah. us. Yeah. So a few things yes. on the onset. I think for, for this and for this community, my prayer is that... Uh, People would be welcomed here. That as they as they differ on uh, some of the maybe non essential mm-hmm. core doctrines, mm-hmm. and, and that that we would that we would see humility in that, yeah. and that we would we would engage with one another and wrestle with one another yeah. and and be encouraged with one another, and that um, that we would allow and recognize that all of us have uh, ex- life experience. Mm-hmm. All of us have different things that coat this. If I were to if I were to begin reading this to someone who is uh, a completely different culture than That's me. That's exactly right. You know, in a which different is, part of the world. But the reality is he's, he's writing to a completely different culture. All of it, you know? And, yes. And so it begins to say, okay, maybe maybe my lens and the way I view yes. this, you know, yes. is is uh, a little bit amiss, or at least I need to recognize that when I approach Scripture. That's exactly right. And can we all just recognize that, yeah. that yeah. as we go through here? One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. I I come from a an educational background that is a little bit different than the Nazarene tradition. Yeah. Um. And that that form is a lens, whether we like it or not. I don't think there is a human in history that is able to approach Scripture yeah. without projecting their own worldview yeah. onto it. Yeah. And and I think to a certain extent, it's a gift. It's a gift from God because we need everybody and yeah. everybody's worldview and their life experiences to come alongside. Now, it's important that we stay within the realms of orthodoxy that have been passed down through yeah. thousands of years of tradition. Yeah. And we use tradition and world experience and reason. I mean, it's Wesley's quadrilateral. It's something that we yeah. Nazarenes yeah. cling to. Yeah. Reason, tradition, experience, but everything filters through Scripture. Yeah. Um, and But we all have, we all have those lenses. We yeah. all have rose-colored glasses that yeah. we justify our own beliefs as yeah. we dive into Scripture. Yeah, and I think we need to be humble enough to acknowledge that yeah. before yeah. we just name it. That's right. Right? right. Before, as we approach Scripture. Yeah. I, ha- I haven't over. always been the guy to, yeah. to acknowledge yeah. it. I would fight and 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 well, punch and, to get my way yeah. with how Scripture and knowing, should be and read. And knowing my personality, so on the disc <laughs> assessment, I am a high D. I am right. direct, right. I'm decisive, yes. and when I have a conviction, mm-hmm. it should be everyone else's conviction. Yeah. Yeah. And man, I had to apologize to a uh, gentleman I had lunch with because yeah. uh, my convictions were so strong that I just railroaded the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, we were disagreeing, but it's like, man, Ben, guess what? Whether you were right or wrong, you were wrong. Mm-hmm. Because sure. you screwed up. That's exactly right. Because that That's was exactly not the place. Right. That was not the context for that to yeah. happen. Yeah. And so, how do we how do we approach scripture, and then mm-hmm. how do we c- approach community? Yeah. Amongst us, right? I love that. I, so, when it comes to approaching scripture, I think we have to recognize, or at least address the question: What is more important, exegeting or discerning the heart of God, or exegeting discerning the letter of God? And I think it's important, if we go back to the New Testament, if we go back to um, the Pharisees of Jesus' day, they perfectly understood the letter. Or I shouldn't say understood, they had perfectly memorized and and dove into the letter of God. And yet it was they who completely missed God right before them. Yeah. And so it's important. And how often did Jesus say, if you had understood this, you would have under you would have realized what's before you to the Pharisees. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, when we approach scripture, yes, we can memorize, we can know all of the facts, all the data, all of the information. But we know from <laughs> reading a scripture that that's not enough. Yeah. To a certain extent, we have to go a little bit deeper to see the heart of God yeah. behind the letter. Of God, yeah. and really, I think that's what we all desire. We desire to understand and exegete the heart of God, d- 
deeper than simply exegeting the letter of God. Not to say, we need the letter of God. We yeah. absolutely yeah. need it. I'm not trying to understate the letter of God. Yeah. But what's more important, the letter or the heart? Yeah. And I, I caution against those who just are bound and determined. They know the black and white right. letter right. of God, and this right. is what it has to right. be. And um, that that's... But, I mean, those are the things that the, the arrogance sometimes, the sure, boldness, like sure. that actually kind of drives me away because, you know, this should this should create fear and trembling right, right. and a posture of humility. A willingness to keep on wrestling yeah. so that you, I mean, we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And I know that's maybe a little bit different here, mm-hmm. but to a certain extent, it requires us to keep on wrestling through scripture. I think scripture. it does, yeah. That we're never going to be satisfied in coming to, well, I found a group of people that I can align with. I can put my camp here. And so to a certain extent, you and I, we are within the Nazarene uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. And with that comes certain uh, theological belief systems. And we've decided, hey, we are, we know what we'll die for. We know what we're going to debate through. We know know what's, um, hey, if something different comes up, we'll divide over and then there's the decision. So there's the die for, the divide for, the debate over, and the decide through. Yeah, um, and let's let's talk about that for a few yeah. minutes because I think the the, the, the die for things yes. are the things you're willing to be martyred for. That's exactly right. You know, you look at those at the beginning and the 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 authority of Christ, the triune nature of God, the the yes. Christ as as our Savior, and our salvation through Christ. Messiah. Yep. Yep. And in the authority that honestly that Scripture has. Yes. I mean, that's one of those that we just they're non negotiables. Right. These, these are the tenets of the faith that's you know we, we think through maybe even the Apostles Creed sure you know and sure. some of the some of the the just just the bone the skeletal structure yep of our faith and oftentimes uh, the tenets of whether it's the creeds or um, if you see it in more of like uh, seminaries that all willingly offer anybody to come on in Lifewise is a good example there are s- several tenets several core pillars that Christians across the board agree upon, yeah. um, and they all fall, and these are the things that we are willing to die for, and you mentioned them, the depravity of yeah. man, the triune nature of our God, yeah. the authority of Christ, um, sin nature in mm-hmm. general. These are things we yeah. die for. So if I'm going to a church and they're saying, yeah, uh, Jesus is one way, but you know, there's other ways. Be a good person, or believe in this, or right. spend more... I'm like, no, that's a no. red flag. And that's... I'm dying on the hill to preserve yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So then we get down to the second category, divide. Um, divide. Yeah. Well, how do you know when it's time, hey, the, the church has gone in a direction yeah. that we just cannot be a part of anymore? We're not dying on a hill, but man, what that pastor just said or what the board uh, of elders have just decided, we can't be a part of this anymore. Yeah. Um, and I think to a certain extent, that's why we have denominations. Mm-hmm. We, we've recognized, hey, we're, we consider these men and women brothers and sisters in yeah. Christ, yeah. But we are reading scripture differently, and when it comes to our own philosophy and methodology, yeah. we need to do things differently for our, our conscience' sakes. Yeah. And oftentimes, I think a good way of doing this, of discerning through these, is going through an article of faith. For us, the Nazarene tradition, we have our core tenets, yeah. but we also add to those core tenets, um, and we see 16 different articles of faith. And some people are just going to view those a little yeah. bit differently, especially as you get to the end articles of faith. Yeah. Uh, I think of one in particular when it comes to eschatology, the, the study of the end times. Yeah. When I first started interviewing for pastoral jobs well before NAPNAS hired me, I would go to a church's articles of faith and see what do they believe when it comes to the end times. Now, for me, I'm, I'm more open-handed. That's just where I've landed. Um, but some churches are like, no, we divide over this, and we're going to be a particular form of eschatology, mm-hmm. a particular way of thinking when it comes to yeah. the end times. And that's okay. Yeah. And they've divided. But I knew for myself I can't be a part of that church because of how I am more open-handed. Yeah, and I think if you, ta- if you take the second and third item here, the divide for and debate for, Yeah. They can they can rise and fall they, yes. based on based on the church. So you think of Calvinism versus Arminianism, or you know, free will of God, sovereignty of man. Absolutely, some churches that's to that's to to debate for, and we agree to disagree about about yep. those things. Other churches because maybe they emphasize it 
uh, one one over another. That's right. Uh, baptism, right? Uh, sacraments, mode of baptism. Yes. Uh, you yes. know, do you sprinkle? Do you dunk? Yes. Infant baptism versus believer's yep. baptism. Yep. Baptism into membership. Baptism as salvific. Right. right? A lot right. of times those are divide for issue. Transubstantiation, consubstantiation. What's happening with the uh, the blood of yeah. Christ, the body of Christ? Is it is it representative? Is it is it the actual once yes. it's blessed? Yeah. Of yeah. is it open table, closed table, communion? You know, when we talk about the the uh, the Eucharist. And so, That's right. So there's things in between, though, that, that uh, some of those are to divide for, some of those are to, ba- to debate for, and, yep. and different churches have different postures towards that. And what's important with this is NAPNAS, as one particular uh, tradition, if you will, uh, we're Arminian, we are Wesleyan in our belief system, we believe uh, in a larger degree of human free will mm-hmm. over um, our brothers and sisters across town, yeah. where they're going to be more uh, reformed and Calvinistic, and they're going ele- to lower man's free will, and we yeah. both want to elevate God's sovereignty, and how we yeah. do that just takes different approaches, yeah. but guess what? They're still brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. We agree on the things that we are dying yeah. for, yeah. that we're not going to earn our salvation through works, that it's only yeah. through the blood of Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection, that we even yeah. have a chance yeah. at having a relationship with yeah. God. We agree on these things. Yeah. And so even though we are not a part of the same local body or yeah. the same church body, we're still a part of the same uppercase, capital C, church. Yeah. We're going to get to to eternity, and I think we're all going to be a little frustrated with sure. what we thought and, and how <laughs> things are, because the reality is our... our our God, his 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 ways are greater, right? Yeah. His his yeah. his thoughts are higher, and yes. so um, we. That's why we approach this with humility, yeah. with understanding. Okay, there are, there are primary, secondary, tertiary, tertiary. items of, and bottom level things yeah, that just, we can decide yeah, upon. Yeah. yeah. So that's I think that's the fun one uh, the decide for. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a pastor. Uh, we were listening to the same guy, and he mentioned, you know, these are the these are the decisions to where do you want drums in the band or yeah, not? Yeah, I know. These are personal preferences where Scripture is not. Addressing no, these in particular, but churches have elevated that and divided over no, it, and that shouldn't be taking place. And it's it just what the tragedy of yes. it is because yeah. because I believe just the man, it's just a, it's just a tragedy when yeah. when yeah. things that you just need to decide for that they're not th- theological, they're preferential. That's exactly right. right? That's exactly right. Um, I want an old person preaching. I want a young church. I want yeah. a yeah, yeah, yeah drums yeah. on it. Yeah. I don't want any electrics. I need an organ. And really, when it comes down to decisions, uh, if we are uh, elevating our preferences, yeah. we are then pushing forward this consumer mindset when it comes to a church, that it's about how I'm getting fed, my entertainment, what I'm getting out of it, but that's not the church at all. Yeah. Church is all about community, family, body. Yeah. Um, it, 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 in the same way that my body needs both of its hands, doing the work and serving and being a part of it. If, yeah. if the right hand decided, well, I don't like the left hand anymore, I'm going to leave, not only does that hinder the hand from doing the work of God, but it actually handicaps the body from being its, working out its full potential Living for the kingdom. Fullness. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Go ahead. So we have, we have uh, the things to die for. We have the things to divide over, debate, and then decide. And so once we get through all of those and we've determined, okay, these are the things I'm dying for and debating and whatever, um, there are other things that we also need to take into account. And I love Wesley's quadrilateral in the sense that, yes, Scripture is of the highest authority. Nothing is even on the same level when it comes yeah. to Scripture. But there are certain things that lead into that. Reason and tradition uh, and experience. If something is not lining up, I, one of the things that uh, I was listening to a, a video by Dr. John Lennox, and he brings up this point that for for a few hundred years after Christianity, or several hundred years even, yeah. uh, there were certain pieces of scripture that people would rely upon to justify yeah. that the earth does not revolve around the sun. We see it in Samuel, we see it in the Psalms, where it's told the earth is fixated on pillars and cannot be shaken, it cannot be moved. And so when we're looking at this, it seems pretty straightforward. Okay, it's black and white. The earth is fixed. Therefore, everything in the universe must then center or revolve around the earth. Well, modern science, experience, and reason has shown us that this is not true. Now, does that mean that the word of God is full of errors and, and it's fallible? Well, of course not. But when we allow ourselves to go deeper than simply the letter of God and yeah. discern the heart of God, what is God yeah. saying here? Well, God is elevating the earth as the epitome of his creation, his, his people. 
And so what we've realized here is we have our four Ds, debate or die, mm-hmm. divide, debate, and decide, mm-hmm. but there are also different pillars of how we interpret Scripture. One of those pillars is the exegesis of the letter of God. We need the letter of God. We need the black and white. We need to allow that to to form different opinions, but it can't stay there. There are different pillars. So we have the exegesis of the letter of God. But then we also have different pillars. We have the, the narrative of God. We have, what was God doing from the beginning and how this is This is that, like your favorite thing, man. This is my favorite Cue thing. Cue the graphic. We need a whiteboard. We board. need a whiteboard so we can yeah. walk through this. Yeah. The narrative of yeah. God is one. What was God doing in the beginning? Creation. Before fall. the fall. Yep. And how, do, how does that narrative then move forward to the end of Scripture? And I think to a certain extent that allows us to see even the idea yeah. of marriage. What was God doing before the fall? What is God doing at the end of time? We can see God's heart behind marriage. Yeah. And, and, and then there comes, once there's the narrative, then there's the trajectory mm-hmm. of Scripture. Yeah. What is God aiming towards us? In Scripture, if we would go back to the Old Testament, we see slavery. And we, we find slavery again in the New Testament. Does that mean that God condones slavery, that God endorses slavery? By no means. But what we see here is that through the narrative, there's a trajectory. Mm-hmm. God never upends culture. He never comes in and says, this is the way I need it done, and then flips everything on its head, leaving us stranded, wondering, what are we to do? No, no, no. He subtly, all throughout Scripture, um, continues to bring forth his will. And when it comes to something such as slavery, we continually see the heart of God. And it talks about how all of a sudden in the Old Testament, we're going to elevate the slaves because they have rights. They're part of God's creation, but he never upends it. We, we learn how slavery is talked about in, in yeah. ancient Old Testament cultures. Yeah. And it's yeah. a difficult topic. Does God endorse slavery? By no means. Yeah. But it's through the trajectory that we begin to see the heart of God when it yeah. comes to this subject. Even, you know, even, even with marriage. Right, the yeah. trajectory and what Jesus says about marriage, and say we have the law That's exactly and what right. that permits, and then yes. Jesus says, "Okay, he yes. gives other instructions to it." But do you think it's ever God's desire? Uh, I believe it breaks the heart of God. Yes, when that union is broken, when that union is broken, and that man wouldn't separate something that God has joined together. That's his well, desire. Well, hold on now, Ben. The Old Testament allows for that. The, the law of God allows for that. And that could be used as an excuse if we're only exegeting, but you're exactly right. If we move forward, look what Jesus does yeah. with culture. It's the trajectory yeah. and how he yeah. uses the law to say, hey, you've heard that uh, you should pay back what was done wrong to you. But I tell you, no, turn the other cheek. Yeah. You see, it's a trajectory of the narrative of Scripture that we yeah. begin to see the heart of God beneath and deeper into the letter of God. So yeah. we have these three pillars. Sometimes there's a yeah. fourth pillar. We have the narrative, the trajectory, and then we have the exegesis. Sometimes we can throw in there a fourth pillar depending on the topic that we're talking about. And we'll get into that in, mm-hmm. with later podcasts. But mm-hmm. in this case, when it comes to approaching scripture, we have to understand this. I, I have an analogy that I used um, uh, with, with one of our staff members here. And you have your own analogy regarding a car. Uh, The analogy I use when it comes to approaching Scripture, let's say, for instance, there's a mom and a dad, and they leave home. But when they leave home, they have a a son and a daughter there, and they tell the son, hey, you're in charge. You're the decision maker. You need to be the one who's uh, running the household while we're gone. And that's how they leave it. In fact, they may have even wrote it in a letter, but that's all they needed to say. Now, let's say I'm a family friend to to this couple, to this family. And I know, because I'm an outsider, but an outsider who knows the context and the particular dynamic of that family, I know that the reason they made the son in charge is because he's older, he's more mature, he's responsible. And in fact, the young daughter, she's maybe two years old. She has no ability to decide for herself. And so I know the situation. Let's fast forward 15 years. Let's say the older boy, he's, he's out of the house. He's working. He's at college doing something else. This two-year-old girl now is a 17-year-old teenager. She's proven herself to be responsible. She's proven herself to be um, mature in the decision-making. But meanwhile, in these 15 years, they had a young baby boy. And now this young baby boy, let's say he's five years old. But when they leave the house again, they don't leave instructions on who's in charge. All they have to rely upon is what they said, what the parents said 15 years prior. And let's say this five-year-old, he finds the letter. I don't, this is a hypothetical. He finds this letter that the parents wrote 
15 years ago, and it says, hey, it says the son is in charge. And this is his logic for telling the 17-year-old mature older sister who has learned and, and able to make decisions, and this is his logic to say, no, 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 I'm the decision maker. There's a five-year-old boy, and we're assuming he's able to read and mm-hmm. all yeah, of this. Like your, this is yeah. where the illustration right. falls short. Right. But all of a sudden, we recognize there's got to be something deeper than understanding, than simply taking the yeah. letter of God, the letter of these parents, and yeah. saying it's black and white, the son's in charge. Yeah. No, 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 hold on. We have to understand what was the heart of it. Yeah. And if I'm someone who was around at the beginning, and I'm still around 15 years ago, I can easily say to that five-year-old boy, no, 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 no. Let me tell you why they made the boy in charge last time. He was older, more yeah. mature, and discerning. You, my friend, are five years old. You do not have the ability to make a decision. And this analogy, though, yes, it falls short in many ways. It should really impact how we read scripture yeah. as well. You said it at the very beginning. It was written to a completely different culture at a completely different time. And we need to be humble enough to recognize, wait a minute, maybe, just maybe, my worldview, my life experience is feeding a little bit too much into how I'm interpreting Scripture. Yeah, maybe maybe the hot nor cold had a little bit more to do with uh, cisterns and... and, uh, that's exactly right. Than it did being spiritually hot or spiritually exactly cold. But because right. of revivalist movements, we yes. say, you know, be, you know, at least you walk away from the Lord. Don't be yeah. lukewarm yeah. because it yeah. had, you know. It's like, no, that passage to that culture in that context. It meant something is completely, completely different. Completely different. That's exactly right. And it could be because the hot water and the cold water, they both had served a purpose. And yes. the lukewarm, by yes. the time it had gotten yes. to where Paul was writing to, didn't yes. really have a Yes. serve much of a purpose. But I grew up thinking that the cold water were bad Christians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And only when I discovered the culture of that yeah, time that I realized, yeah. wait a minute, the cold water is really good. Yeah, because we read it through our lens exactly and, and how right. we see things and exactly right. what shapes us. And so every time we read Scripture, three worlds collide. Yes. So we have... We have the text that yes. is before us. <laughs> yes. That was not written to us, but no. for us. Yes. We re- we It's valuable. Yeah. We have the context. Yep. That... that um, Implicitly, explicitly, the reader, the the hearer of that time and place would yeah. have understood yeah. contextually. Yeah. And then we have the reader. This is us. Yeah. And 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 what does it mean for us today? And we have the world in front of us yes. two thousand years later, yes. and we're we're saying, no, this is what it, yes. what it had to have meant. That's exactly right. And I think when we approach it and understanding, okay, this wasn't written to us, but for us. For, for the edifi- for to, to reveal Christ. That's exactly right. There was something else happening that yeah. we need to understand. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 and what am I bringing into this text that is shaping how I'm reading it today? Yes, yes. And I think it's so important. Now, now somebody might push back and say, well, hold on. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to read Scripture ever again. You, you guys have overcomplicated this. You've made this way too big yeah. to tackle. But no, no, no. The, the beginning quote still stands true. Yeah. Though it's deep enough for an elephant to swim in, to bathe in, it's still shallow enough yes. for a child to play in. But you have to be willing to engage yeah. both sides. Yeah. There is a reason why when we read Scripture the first mm-hmm. time, we're not going to understand everything. It takes years. And, and wisdom and, and sages wisdom. and others it's in exactly our lives right. to, to, to assist and to help with this. I hope that in 10 years, when you and I are still doing these podcasts, we're still banking on that, whether it's guests or wherever we're at in the world, <laughs> we're still going to... But in 10 years, I hope my understanding of Scripture is different than what it is now. I'm not saying that I hope I'm wrong on everything, but I hope I understand it at a deeper level. It doesn't require a theology degree. It doesn't require um, some special training, but there are are people in my life that I know that haven't had any formal training, but their understanding of Scripture is so deep because that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to take you deeper with each time you read it. Yeah. Um, Then I wrote down, we tend to believe things because we really want to believe them. They're often driven by yes. our desires, and we have skin yes. in the game. Yeah. This, is yeah. the, this is the experience. This is the traditional piece, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, whether it's fear, anger, doubt, suspicion, all of these things, they affect our thinking, and it's important yeah. to, to yeah. name it when we approach it, but also to remember that, guess what? Um, it, is, it is sufficient. Mm-hmm. It is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it points us towards uh, holiness in Christ, yeah. uh, Christ-likeness. Yeah. And if we if we fix our eyes on him and see how all of scripture, the fulcrum, yeah, is what yeah. Christ is doing yeah. through the grand narrative yes. of the of yes. the fall, right? Oh. Of the redemption, of this, of this uh, messianic king that comes. Yeah. And then and then through renewal and the promise of what's to come. 
than in glorification. That's exactly right. That's exactly then, right. And we can live into that. Yeah, and I think, and I think to a certain extent, and there there may be someone who's saying, no, 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 uh, all we need is the the exegesis of the letter, like that's all I need. And I would argue that when someone simply relies on the letter of God, we miss all of that. Yeah. We miss the the grand narrative and the grand trajectory yeah. of what God is doing in our world to restore yeah. and to reconcile and to redeem. If we're not studying Genesis. Yeah along with Romans, then we're missing what God is doing across the board. Well, I would caution against recklessness with that because there's a lot of things that Scripture says. And so, you know, we need to be mindful of that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, even you look through the Psalms and you look through some other things and it's like, holy cow, that's in the Bible? Yeah. It's not, what's happening? Right. Yeah, and we have, to, and like you said, there's a context to what is happening. There yeah. is the world behind the text, the the ones who are receiving it initially, the world in front of the text, and then the context that surrounds it all. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when we read in Psalm yeah. 137, hey, uh, verse nine, blessed shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Now. If we are simply exegeting, I mean, we can take the context, we can take all of Psalm 137 if we want to, and that's not going to help us in our comfort when we read this. This seems, how in the world is this in our scripture? How in the world is this representing a loving God? But when we begin to look at the context culturally, not simply even the verses that surround this Mm -hmm. verse, but when we look at the culture, what was going on, when we begin to understand words such as imprecatory prayers. Now, that's a that's a whole other podcast. But this is what we're talking about here: that there is there is more Mm -hmm. than simply the surface level, and that God is doing something, even with Psalm one thirty seven verse nine, to demonstrate an attribute. And let me just say for everyone who's listening, no one is actually blessed by taking an infant and tossing them to rocks. That is not what this psalm is saying. And no, it does not require a seminary degree to understand this, but it does take a deeper level of willingness to wrestle with the Word of God. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about we end there? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I think the heart of this podcast was to just to, as, as we approach Scripture, how do we do that? Yeah. And are there multiple things at play here? And can yeah. we approach it with humility? And saying it's not just about obtaining more knowledge about this, but understanding what's happening yes. in the heart of God. In the heart of God. In how he communicates with with his people. Yeah, and how he wants to continue pushing forth his kingdom on this earth so that one day we can be all be in right relationship with him.